have our we had our FEP version uh, last year. MCRR had that FEP version, but they we just uh, bought it one for one and a half year. It was uh, 15 years of play, 20 years of track. So it's uh, four, 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 four years of play. So it's a uh, it's a year of celebration. Um, and actually, the world was quite different when we started 30 years ago. I told you that uh, I remember the early days of play. I think Eagle Eye was not there. But uh, the world changed a lot uh, in that time. Uh, as part we, well, we were talking to play all the time. I was also involved in play. Uh, so it became increasingly hard for us to just organize the workshop. And also, because it was an isolated event to attract new people. The Agnes Federation is still gone, but to attract new people was increasingly difficult. So we were talking also to Nicola, so why, why not do our workshop next to or within Clay? So and now Paolo is coming from the local organization for me this year. Thank you. Uh, take care of all the registration, all the mess. So that saves us a lot of time. And because we're there anyway, that's, that's why, why Nicola is telling us that there's a lot of people now in it. And I guess that we, this year will still be, definitely this year will be live, maybe after that. So it's easier to get access. Um, so that, that, that sounds like a win-win, and IMAX has been doing it in, in a number of areas, so Clay can profit from that, and we can get profit from talking as well. Um, so that looks very well. Of course, our only problem last year, or the running for 2012, was that we had to cross the line. If we, we had our workshop of the year before, 2011, and in September we were standing in Rome to support the next year, so that was a nine-month cycle, and the women in the audience nine-month cycle for us. Hard to the event. So we, we had a difficult year to keep set, stuff on schedule. Mm -hmm. Two days. Oops. Two days of email. Uh, IMAX 12 had five tracks. I'm just going to talk about IMAX 12. Just accept with a lot of us feedback track. The rest of the tracks will continue. Um, most of the tracks have only went some changes. I talk a lot about, a lot about uh, as per well, two weeks if you want to do the skip of tracks, people will do more tasks. So that track actually still has an ongoing task based on the previous task we did there. They booked a task with a scan book. And that's still ongoing because a, a number of participants were actually willing to take up on keeping people organizing it and extending the data. And actually there was more than one team. So we still facilitate that. Although as far as we're concerned, that activity is mostly still. Now, some US teams joined in, so it might actually cross the cross extend the test collection anyway. Why not just apply for it? Uh, it's still there. And this is the data we still have there. Uh, then we have the link data track. Uh, I'm a bit unknown, but not going to happen with QIT link data because we already run a link data track. Uh, we actually have a specific corpus for that, so Wikipedia and Jago. Uh, it's partly run by the Max Planck folks on the Yago side. Uh, also, the GDPF folks are related to the Max Planck run, so we have, have insight into them. But what we're looking at is, is a large textual corpus that has semantic annotation. And in fact, GDPF and Wikipedia gives that. Most of GDPF is derived from Wikipedia. So we have, we have a long textual document where you can do IRS things on directly tied to a semantic uh, search uh, approach to Wikipedia and Yago higher. To really look at okay, what's happening if you look at uh, searching in the Wikipedia very just for the highly structured world of semantic search versus the structure-ish or uh, the highly textual world of Wikipedia and what will happen in the coming years. Uh, that had three tasks. So the ad hoc retrieval tasks is kind of okay, this is NP retrieval. You can either search in the structured part, either search in the textual part, or in both, find the uh, enters, entities, answers, and add up information. So just just at the entity level. Uh, Jeopardy is kind of interesting because it's kind of the task is about writing complex and structured queries that would do a better job than say a simple keyword search. That's what's called Jeopardy. So uh, it's kind of keep generating the answers uh, pick and query, and that's done in Sparkle with a slight freedom in the interpretation of Sparkle. Kind of Google in a highly structured, 
problem you can think of the say the ten questions we so can you can you guess what I have in my mind by asking the ten questions? Animal or vegetable or this or that. And so that kind of structure can be helpful to locate the real set objects. Uh, the facilitated search actually we spent a lot of effort on that. Uh, so the topic set was in particular created with topics, subtopics and sub subtopics. So we have a, a whole hierarchy of Related topics, so we can actually look at what would be happening if we browse through a facet of search interface. Uh, but that's that kind of got a little bit in the way in the nine month period. Uh, so we, we, we have some evaluation of some sets, but as the workshop, we still have not received official submissions and we'll just push that through because then we will have all the relevant data already ready before we actually start the set in 2013. Uh, Few facts. So for ad hoc, actually it runs using also the structure interface. We are not doing the only thing like a word search uh, works best. Fast with it, it's still ongoing. Uh, for Sparkle, actually it was interesting. So the, 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 the complex Sparkle tickets are actually very effective. Unfortunately, the simple text squares are also very effective. They're actually still better. So they score actually work quite well for this meeting in a haystack task. Actually, the squares are still too, too simple. Simple, so the, the, the normal type of work thing is still a little bit better. But at least it's, it's comforting to know that you can write a very long, meaningful Sparkle query that has lots of useful hints and actually works quite well. Screen context validation is an interesting task because we, we, we somehow got the NLP community of France on board who were not happy with some other tracks and they wanted to do something two ways and then they merged into screen context validation. So what is tweet contextualization? So a lot of information published nowadays is in short tweet or post. So you have a, a, a very restricted thing where a lot of information is in. And there's, there's no room to give any contextual information. So the task is, so for some museum event, somebody posts about this. So you can't assume that reference resources, so Wikipedia, have already information on the event that's unfolding. But you could assume that it will have useful information, a background information. Exhibition, probably that exhibition, that new exhibition is not in Wikipedia. But uh, this uh, Francesca Hoodman, that person, published an article who is in Wikipedia and lots of other useful background information. So it's not so if you see a plane crashing, that plane crash will be in Wikipedia, but a lot of general information about plane crash, the types of planes, the area, the logistics, the weather forecast of the area, the general logistics will be in Wikipedia. So the task is actually, given such a tweet with a link, provide useful background knowledge for that thing, for that link, uh, for the post. Uh, and that has a mobile use case, so just having a bunch of links to long, long, long textual pages is not enough. You have to find smaller, comprehensive bits. So that's a multi-document summarization problem. And since it's run primarily by email people, people they will also judge it in the way they are useful, so they'll say, yes, this is formative, this is editability. And of course, they will take some form of relevance judgments also do the IR function. Uh, on the other hand, we have a IR-centric task, which is called Snippet Retrieval, uh, which is playing a little bit with uh, 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 kind of the, the snippet, or what, whatever you present here as, as a summary, should be informative enough for a person to decide yes or no, I'm going to click on this and actually read the thing. So in a way, well, this has more of a judgment point of view, but the, the snippet should be informative enough for me to judge whether or not I should click on this result and read the whole thing. Uh, 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 and that actually turns out to be often not the case. So people avoid snippets that are not informative enough, and of course, we click data as a general search engine. But useful feedback and the results, the top results of the general search engine are just filtered on click data, so pages, clicks generate bad snippets which will lose in the range of the normal ones. Uh, Pop up, but if you run your own, own summarization document, snippet retriever, often the quality is, is not very high, and uh, in certain cases you want a longer description, or you want a, a more complex description, or you want more of the semantic version at the uptime. Uh, so, uh, so this track got the vision of the nine month period, and actually I prefer the results I showed last week. There was a small trial test 
from September, uh, but mostly it went after September. And the final track was the Alpha Speed Tech track, uh, which also, after a more, more, more open discussion on bringing system builders back into IR, like I said, 10 years ago, everybody built, had their own homegrown system. Nowadays, almost nobody has their own homegrown system to download, which is very uh, uh, for, 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 for the American systems. Nobody, almost nobody builds their own system. In particular, this focused on the relevance feedback component. Uh, and actually, an automatic platform was set up for that. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, the system will actually simulate an interaction and simple interaction based on relevance, which will, will, uh, uh, will tell you, yes, this result I like, no, that's not correct. So, you can do true relevance feedback based on simulated that data. Results improve. Uh, the interesting thing is that this, this runs continuously online. So at any time you upload uh, uh, your, uh, your your feedback module uh, and your run, it will give you the output, and you can incrementally improve your run. Uh, and then you can so you get tired. It's not like you have to wait for a success to find out. So this runs completely online. Proceedings, like people are spelling, the post proceedings usually take some time. So the INX 11 proceeding, uh, as shown here, is actually actually just out. I work with physical copies are finally printed with some delay. Springer is very busy running, chasing after the phone bundles that have permanent deadlines. So it's get, getting actually harder and harder to get a post proceedings through to the to give priority to the relevant somebody that has 10 weeks to finish the proceedings for a phone bundle which they want to mail on Friday. Case this year that we were delayed a number of times uh, came up. Uh, the INX 12 post proceedings, uh, we did not probably call for end of January, and uh, we hope to get it out in September. Uh, at least we signed one year late in a way for the next uh, security event. Uh, so we continue to publish these uh, post proceedings. Uh, uh, I think the some work that we did is well used by useful resource uh, as a reference to work at INIX, because as Nicolas said, he talks about uh, the whole the industry built this reusable test collections, and it's part of the documentation is missing. Uh, INIX 13, as part of CRAE 13, is, is open, registration is open. You can find information on the CRAE site. It actually redirects you to our own registration system, which is saved automatically. Uh, we did not manage to Activity, real activity before Christmas, as we did hope, but we'll, we'll have things up and running in January, and then hopefully the tight deadline for next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? No? Thank you so much.